Hey everyone, it's um, time for section 5.3, day two, and this is going to be our final section that has to do with um, probability. And uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at a little bit more uh, difficult of a probability question. And um, this is going to be called the, I think it's called the pair game. Yeah, so we'll, let's take a look at this pair game. That's going to be our similar um, our game for today. All right, let's take a look. At, let's take a look. So here are the rules of the game. You're going to get five, there are going to be five cards. Two of them are aces and three of them are the king. So three kings, two aces, and a player chooses their first card and records the results. Then they're going to choose their second card without replacement and then records the result. Now this without replacement is a little bit of text here that's going to make this a little bit difficult for us to do. Because now every time we draw a card, the probability of getting the same card is going to decrease dramatically. So a player is going to win if they uh, get an ace. And we'll talk about what those probabilities and how they change are. So choose one person who's a dealer, one person who's a player. Well, I'm going to be the, both the dealer and the player. And we're going to use a handy dandy uh, probability here. Uh, what do we call this simulation over here? So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to remove this and I'm going to show you what's underneath here. It's all five cards, two aces, one black one, one red one, and then three kings, one red one, and two black ones. And all we're going to be doing to shuffle is we're just going to be rearranging those five cards. Now the two cards that you will get are going to be only the top two cards. So we'll cover the rest of the cards so that we don't get confused. So in this one, we got an ace and a king, and the result is a lo loss. So we'll put lose over here. And you notice what happens here. This is going to be the win proportion. So we lost. We have one loss out of one game. So that's going to be a loss. Let's play it again. And we lose again. We've got a king and an ace this time. So that's another loss. Our win proportion is going to be zero again because we have two losses in two games. Let's try one more time. Hopefully we'll win. And oh, this time we win. We got two kings, one black king and one red king. So now we have a win. And things start to change because now the win probability is 0.333. Because we played three games, one, out, one win out of three games is a win proportion of 0.333. Let's see if we can get another win. Nope, another loss. So let's put another loss there. Our brings our percentage down to 0.25. Let's do this again. And uh, another loss. This time we got the red king and the black ace. So another loss. Our winning percentage is going down or our winning proportion is going down. Play another time. Looks like we win. We got two kings this time. So we got a win. It's going to bring that proportion right back up. We'll play again. Now we have an ace and a king. That is a loss. We play it again. We got another ace and king. That's another loss. Brings our win proportion down to 0.25. Play again. This time we get king as the first card and ace as the second card. That's another loss. And we'll play again. And king, king, that is a win. So we finish up with a win proportion of uh, 300. Let's go ahead and we're going to put this over here. So full disclosure, I don't actually remember all the cards that were drawn but I did keep track of whether or not we won or we lost. So this is the best that I can to my to recollection of what we did. So based on our 10 games, what's the probability of winning? And if we go back to our game, it looks like our winning our probability of winning is about 300. Let me zoom in again. It always wants to unzoom. But it looks like our probability of winning is about 300. So over here, what's our probability of winning? That's 300 is about 30%. Well, it's actually 
Okay. So next we're supposed to go to the front of the room and record the number of wins in our 10 games. And then we're going to aggregate the data to find out what's the probability of winning the game. Okay. Well, you can't really do that to have you go to the board. So one thing we can do is we can simulate a bunch of games. And as you can see here, if we have a class of 31, we got a probability of winning of 0.355. But you know me, I had to take this further. So actually, I pretended that I had a class of 100 kids, and that got us to a win percentage of 310. So over here, based on the whole class data, we got a 31% win percentage. Now those two numbers are pretty close, and that's just a sampling variability here. But, uh, you know, on our based on just our 10 games, we could have had anything from, you know, 2% or 5% to you know, 60%. I've seen all sorts of weird numbers in those first three. So 31% should be close to our actual probability because uh, that's based on 100 games. So based on 100 games, you would think that we are getting close to the actual probability. And coming back here, you'll also notice that I did another one of those graphs and we can see the graph settling down right around 30%. So we spent a long time with a really high percentage, and that kind of settles down. So here's our proportion of wins. I'll put this on our uh, doc also. There we go. That looks pretty good. That brings us our proportion that's settling at 31%. All right. So what we're going to do to find out the theoretical probability is we're going to create what's known as a tree diagram. And with a tree diagram, basically, you start from left to right or from bottom to top, but you start over where there is a single thing happening. We're doing the ace game. And then two things could happen. The first thing that could happen is this one right here. And that would be the first card is an ace. That's the outcome of the first card. Alternatively, what could have happened was the first card could have been a king. So we're writing down all the things that could have happened with those first cards. Now, what was the probability that that first card was going to be a king? Sorry, that what was the probability that that first card was going to be an ace? Well, if I go back to my game here, let's get right back to the top and uncover the cards. We had two aces and three kings. So the probability that that first card was going to be an ace, that was going to be two fifths. And now it, it might be good to write a, um, instead of two fifths, uh, point, point 0.4 there if you wanted to, but that's not necessary. Now the next thing, the other thing that could have happened with that first card is it could have been a king. And what would the probability of that have been? Well, that would have been three-fifths because there were three cards that were a king. What I want you to notice here is that these two numbers that are branching off of the start of the game, those two numbers add up to 100%. Anytime we have the branching off of one result like this, those two branches, the probabilities have to add up to 100%. Well, that's good to know. Let's go to the yellow outcome here. And in the yellow outcome, if that first card is an ace, what's the probability that that second card is going to be an ace? Well, if we go back to all the cards that we had, if that first card happened to be an ace, that means there's only one more ace left in the deck. But the deck is only going to have four cards in it. Because remember, we took that first ace, we gave it to you, and now the four cards in the other hand are going to be um, one ace and three kings. So we know exactly what happened every time a card is played. So because there's only one ace card left out of the four in the deck, that probability is going to be one fourth also. Now, using the properties that I just did in the red circle over here, 
That means that this box here and this box here, they have to add up to, let me highlight those, um, this box here and this box here, that has to add up to one because they are both branching off of the same um, place. So even without knowing that there were th uh, three king cards out of four, we could have, uh, well, we do know that that probability is going to be three out of four. So three out of four, either you're counting cards or using the properties of the probabilities to know that that is going to be three out of four. So the second card is a king. That's going to be this over here. Okay, and then let's, let's take a look at the other side. What if the first card was a king? So again, we've given you one king, and then in the other hand, you're going to have four cards still. There's going to be two aces and two kings. So what's in the deck? If we already know, well, what's the probability then of getting that second card to be an ace? So again, there are two ace cards out of the four that are in the deck. So that's going to be two out of four. Now what about the probability that the second card is going to be a king? Okay, well the probability of the second card is going to be a king. We already know that these two, um, these two, because they branch off of the same um, place, these two have to add up to 100%. So that probability is also going to be point or 2 out of 4. You could have replaced that with 1 half or a 0.5. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, you don't have to reduce fractions here in stats. So now that we have that taken care of, how do we figure out the probability? Well, let's figure out, first of all, what each of these branches mean. So if we go down this very first branch, let me do this in a different color. Let's do this in green. Okay, let's do this in red. <laughs> if we go down this branch right here, okay, that means that we had the first card was an ace and the second card was an ace. That's kind of what it says right here. First card is an ace and the second card is an ace. So what's the probability of that happening? Well, the probability that the first card is an ace is two-fifths, and the probability that the second card is an ace this is going to be one-fourth. Since they can't have the first card be an ace and the second card be an ace, since the probability that the first card is an ace, um, well, it... it is two-fifths and the second one is one-fourth, in order to get the probability of this outcome, we're just going to multiply down the branch. So the probability that the first card is an ace and the second card is an ace is two-fifths multiplied by one-fourth, which is two out of 20. And we're going to do this for each of these branches. Now what's the probability that the... Where are we? What is the probability that the first card is an ace and then the second card is a king? Now, these are getting really muddy, but that what is that probability? That's going to be all of the probabilities associated down the branch. That's going to be two-fifths multiplied by three-fourths. What is two-fifths times three-fourths? Well, that's 6 out of 20. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep on multiplying down the branches. Let's use a different color this time. Um, or, well, let's use the same color. Uh, what about the probability that the first card is a king and then the second card is an ace? Well, to get that probability, we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply the 3 fifths multiplied by the 2 out of 4, and that's going to give me 6 out of 20. And then finally, we'll do the very last branch, and the last branch is the first card is a king, and then the second card is also a king. So what's that probability? 
that probability is the three-fifths multiplied by two-fourths, basically the exact same thing. All right, so now we know all four possible outcomes, and we know the probability of each of those outcomes. All we need to do to find the theoretical probability of winning the game is to figure out which of these four outcomes are um, winners. And the ones that are winners are ace and ace, and king and king. Now these two outcomes are mutually exclusive because there's no way that you can have an ace ace and a king king. It's either one or the other. So the probability of winning, that's going to be the probability of an ace ace plus the probability of a king and a king. Remember those are mutually exclusive so we are okay just to add those probabilities together. And so our theoretical probability is 2 out of 20 plus 6 out of 20 for a total of 8 out of 20 or 0 0.4. So clearly we haven't played enough games to get to the theoretical probability because we were only at 31%. So we need to play more games to see that 40% show up. But it will. We just may take a lot of games. Okay, so now the question turns to what's the probability that the first card was a king given that the person won the game? Okay, so this is verbiage that you should be familiar with. We have a given that the person won the game. Now for these more difficult probabilities, we, we are going to have to go to the definition of um, conditional probability. All right, the first card is a king, given that we have a win. So let's get to, let's write down the, um, the definition here. So by definition, this is going to be equal to the probability of a first card king and a win divided by the probability of a win. So what is the probability that the first card is a king and we got a win? Okay, so here we've got... Let me point this out for you. Let's use the green marker. Here is our first card win, first card king. And then if we get a first card king, the probability of winning is 6 out of 20. So the probability of the first card king and a win is 6 out of 20. Now that we have 6 out of 20, we just need to know, divide that by the probability of winning. So what was the probability of winning? Well, that was 8 out of 20. What's 6 out of 20 divided by 8 out of 20? Well, that's just equal to 0 out of 75. So as you can see, once you have all of the outcomes listed, and once you have all of the probabilities for each of those, and um, I should say uh, mutually exclusive outcomes, a lot of these problems become pretty easy. All right, that kind of brings us to our 5.3 day two conditional probabilities and independence. So we've got learning target number one is what we call the general multiplication rule. And it goes like this. The probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B knowing that A has already occurred or given that A has occurred. And that kind of makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. If we take a look at our tree diagram, this one fourth here, let me color that in, this one fourth here, that's the probability that the second card is an ace given that the first card was an ace. So if we knew that the first card was an ace, then the probability that the second card is an ace is uh, three, sorry, what was that? Um, one out of four. So really, all of these probabilities that branch off of the first or the second branching, those are all conditional probabilities. And of course, if we had another set of branches, those would be conditional probabilities. So the conditional probabilities are knowing that this first event here happened, 
What's the probability that the second event happened? It's one fourth. What's the probability that the second card is a king? If the first card is an ace, that's three out of four. What's the probability that the second card is an ace, given that the first card was a king? That's two out of four. And then finally, what's the probability that the second card is a king, given that the first card is a king? Well, that's just two out of four. Hopefully you can see how this table also gives you all of those conditional probabilities. Sorry, not table, this tree diagram gives you all of those conditional probabilities. So tree diagram, things to do. Firstly, you wanna label the probabilities along the path. You're gonna fill in all the and probabilities at the end. That's the probability of A and B is equal to probability of A and B over here. Probability of A and B complement, that's this one over here. And then we do all the terminal probabilities at the very end. All of these need to add up to 100%. So you got that? That's our tree diagram. You don't got it? Okay, let's try and make a tree diagram. All right, we have a company makes desktops, laptops, and tablet computers at factories in two states. The California factory produces 40% of the computers, and Texas factory makes the rest, which is 60. In the computers they made in California, 25% are desktops, 30% are laptops, and the rest are tablets. We can, do the, we can do the addition there. And um, in those made in Texas, 10% are desktops, 20% are laptops, and then the rest are tablets. All the computers are first shipped to a distribution center in Missouri before being sent out to stores. Now suppose we select a computer at random from the distribution center and observe it whether where it was made and whether it was a laptop desktop or a tablet. So the first thing I want you to notice is this right here is the, these are conditional probabilities. That's a conditional probability. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's a conditional probability because we know the computer came from California. And let's take a look at the sentence that after that. Of those made in Texas, 10% are made in 10% are desktops, 20% are laptops, and the rest are tablets. Again, that's a conditional probability. It's a conditional probability because we know the computer came from Texas. So if these are all conditional probabilities, probabilities over here, then they should appear as the second branch on the tree diagram. So what about the first branch on the tree diagram? Well, we've got California produces 40%. Notice how that's not mixed up with the other outcome. It's just all of California is 40%. Another way that I like to put it is the probability event state is not mixed in with the other event, which is computer type. So because it's not mixed together, it's a pure probability, we need to make um, state the first branch of our diagram. So now that we did that, we know the first branch of our diagram is going to be state. So we're going to start off with all computers and then we're going to branch to the two states. We've got Calif computers go to Calif come from California or they come from Texas. 40% of them come from California, so 60 of them have to come from Texas. Okay, so now from here, we gotta go to the three computer types. So the first com three computer types, let's just take a look at California. We've got desktop, laptop, and tablet. Now that we got those, we can get those probabilities for, of each of those. These are now conditional probabilities. If we know that the computer came from California, then 25% are desktops. And then how many are laptops. 30% are laptops. And then the rest of them are tablets. So really quickly, that's uh, 0.55. So 0.45 must be tablets. 
Okay, how's it going? Do you got that all already? All right, so now we're gonna figure out these probabilities and these outcomes. So this first probability is what about the probability um, that a computer came from California and is a desktop? So the probability that a computer was from California and is a desktop, we're just gonna multiply down the line. Let's just multiply down the line. We've got 0.4 multiplied by 0.25 0.4 multiplied by 0.25, and that probability is 0.1. We'll do the same thing for the laptop. This time, the probability that a computer is from California is 40%. The probability that a California computer is a laptop is 30%. So we've got 40% multiplied by 30% or 0.2. We'll do the same thing for tablet, maybe a little faster. Great, probability that a computer is from California and is a laptop, sorry, a tablet, that's going to be equal to that 40% here, multiplied by 0.45%, sorry, 0.45, and that's gonna give me 0.18. Now a point that I want to make to you is to notice that these three probabilities at the end, 0.10, plus 0.12 plus 0.18, those have to add up to 0.4. In other words, if we branched off of the 0.4, the end probabilities have to also add up to 0.4. I'm gonna do the Texas probabilities really quick. So let's take, check out Texas. All right, so here we have from Texas is 60% are Texan, 10% are desktop, so the probability of Texas and desktop is 0 0.6 times 0.1 or 0 0.06. Next we have the probability of, um, we have a Texas and laptop. So that's 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.2, meaning the probability that a laptop came from Texas is 0 0.12. And finally, Texas is 60%, 60, 70% of that 60% is a tablet. So the probability of a Texas tablet is 0.42. So that is our tree diagram. I know that's a little bit messy, um, especially when we get to three and four branches, but um, I'm sure you'll, you'll have a good time with this one. So next one, let's find the probability that a computer is a tablet. Well, which outcomes correspond to a tablet? Well, that's this outcome, California tablet, and this outcome, Texas tablet. Now the nice thing about using a tree diagram is if you do it correctly, you can be assured that all these end probabilities here, these are all mutually exclusive. So if, to get any uh, combination of them, you just have to add them. So the California tablet was 0.18. The Texas tablet was 0.42. So that means that 60% of the computers produced are actually tablets. Let's take a look at this one. If we select four computers at random with replacement, what's the probability that at least one computer is a tablet computer? I wanna draw your attention to that phrase, at least one. Now that's a, there's a lot of different ways that we can uh, do four computers at random. We can have one desktop, one laptop, one tablet, we can do two tablets and two desktops. And you can see there, there's quite a few combinations of those um, three computer types if we select four. However, there is only one way to figure out that none of the computers are, the, are tablets. Okay. None of the computers are tablet means that the first computer is not a tablet, the second computer is not a tablet, the third computer is not a tablet, and the fourth computer is not a tablet. It's the probability that the first computer is not a tablet. Well, if a, the probability that a computer is a tablet is 0.6, then the computer probability that a computer is not a tablet is 0.4. So that's the probability that the first computer is not a tablet. And then the probability that the second computer is not a tablet is also 0.4. And then the probability that the comp third computer is not a tablet is 0.4. And the probability that the fourth computer is not a tablet is also 0.4. So the probability of no tablets 
is going to be 0 0.01256. Now, why is that important? Well, if I want to know the probability of at least one tablet, think about this. Either we have no tablets or we have at least one tablet. Those two things are complementary events. No tablets, at least one tablet. There's no mixing between those two. Either you get no tablets or there's at least one tablet in there. So the probability of at least one tablet then should be the complement of no tablets. So it's a probability, it's one minus the probability of no tablets. That should be one minus 0 0.0256, which is 0 0.9744. Wow, that's a really powerful one. Remember you to, uh, to look for that, at least one. It's one minus the probability that the event never happens. Now the last one is given that the tablet computer is selected, what's the probability that it was made in California? That's really similar to what we did on our previous adventure into statistics. So we know that the computer is a tablet computer. What's the probability that it came from California? Okay, that is a condition, a um, yeah, conditional probability. Using our definition of conditional probability, this is going to be equal to the probability that a computer came from California and was a tablet divided by the probability that a computer is a tablet. And we know both of those probabilities. We've already computed them. Going back up to my chart, the probability of California and a tablet is right here at 0.18. And then the probability that we have a tablet, that's 0.6. So all we need to do is do is 0.18 divided by 0.6. And that's just 0 0.3. So that is it. That was actually a really intense calculation. I hope that you saw that all of those numbers are given to us when we make our tree. When you make your tree, all the hard work is done for you, and you just have to do all of the figuring out. So that's it for our unit on probability. Um, this is usually a difficult chapter for a lot of students because, well, there's a lot of math involved here. And um, I know why you're in statistics most of the time. It's not necessarily because you're, you've got, you know, really great computational skills. So that does it. Up next for you is your Chapter 5 practice test and then your Chapter 5 actual test. Good luck to you. And we'll see you next time here for uh, what are we going to be on? Chapter 6? Chapter 6. Good luck on your test, everyone. Have a good day.